Hey, this is Raja Raman. Welcome to .NET Training Academy. In this video, we are going to learn about how to create a signal or chat application with user identity. First, you need to create a Visual Studio. I'm using Visual Studio 2019 and I'm going to use the ASP.NET Core Web Application as well as I'm going to create this application. I'm going to call this application name as Publico. Basically, this video is the sequel of uh, a previous video, which is a signal or uh, chat application. Uh, in that video, I just made a constraint or requirement that if I get uh, 300 likes, uh, I'm going to do the advanced version of signal or chat application with user identity. So I'm going to do that in this video. So thank you for uh, making that achievement in real. Uh, so the second step is to click on any of this. And in that, you have to do another change where you have to select individual user account to enable the identity in our ASP.NET Core project. Okay, that's fine. So let's just uh, create a model up and running over here. So first, I'm going to create an application user model where app user because we have the purpose uh, to modify or configure the basic identity which is available in the basic ASP.NET Core application. To do that, we have to create a class and then we have to inherit the identity user and just import that guy right there. And after inheriting this, uh, we can uh, now uh, add some add or modify fields over here. Uh, so let's create uh, another model called a message uh, over here, message. Okay, that's fine. And now we are going to create a primary key, which is ID and uh, as well as the string username as well as the property of string and the actual text that they are going to develop and as well as the date time where um, where we are going to say in the, the when which I mean which is basically the when they have texted that thing so here uh, the two things is essential one is uh, username and another thing is uh, this guy right here, which is text, because without any text, you cannot have a chat, right? So that's it. So finally, we have to uh, implement a connection or relationship between these two guys. So it would be something like one-to-many relationship where one user can have many messages, right? So in that case, it would be better to go with one-to-many relationship, but it's not the actual scenario that you can have here because all we need to do is to connect the two models okay let's just uh, connect so so this is basically a one to many relationship between the app user and uh, the message right so it's, it's something like one app i mean the one user has many messages so in the app user we have to create a collection of the message class so in a sense we can do something like this uh, virtual and as well as i i collection whereas and message as well as the messages right so that's it mm. and the next thing is uh, constructor messages is equal to new hash set message okay uh, that's fine so uh, next thing is we have to add this guy right here okay so prop int uh, app I'm sorry user ID which suits better not only it's ID then property virtual and app user and uh, yes app user so that's it so then after doing this thing we have to give a relationship between this two uh, basically it's going to be the fluent api based relationship no it's not going to be the public so protected 
override wide yeah here it is so that's it so, so okay and next we're going to use this builder dot entity it's going to be the generic entity whereas the message dot has one dot app user so just inherit the both of the stuffs and uh, a dot and it's going to be this guy right here which is app user dot uh, with many the hyphen the dot um, messages right and then we have to set a foreign key as foreign key t dot user id so uh, this will help in the navigation between the objects uh, of these two classes so it's now good to uh, inherit uh, it's now the time for migrating this both database so initially we have a default migration for uh, identity so we have to first update that Okay, the error is stating that there will be uh, some kind of type issue so basically it's going to be the user ID not let's change the name uh, as well as the sender as well as the um, over here sender so go to the SQL server and let me just explain the uh, explain about this issue which will be helpful in your future so if you see in the ASP.NET users you can see that ID over here is a where care. Okay, so we are trying to, so we are trying to give a foreign key relationship with the uh, message, uh, which is an integer. So it's not compatible. So that we have changed it to string, so which is uh, compatible. Okay, now let's do that. Update the database. I think no, we cannot because we have to add the database um, user with message. Yeah, it's clearly fine. So you can see that um, it is completely migrated. The next thing is we have to update the database. Fine. If you go ahead and see here, uh, just refresh the database, and you can see that the tables have been over here. You can see the messages, whereas you have the columns of messages, you have the user ID as the foreign key, which is a bad card. And you also have the ASP.NET users, and just like that. So if you wanted to add any other fields like first name last name you can go ahead and add it over here just like the properties so the next thing is we have to create a hub so right click over here add new folder hubs and then right click add a class add a class where it's going to be the chat hub dot cs so so after creating the chat app, we have to inherit the hub, okay, which is available in ASP.NET Core SignalR namespace. Then we are going to create public asynchronous way of task send message method. So here we are going to pass the message model, where is it's going to be the message, okay. So then I'm going to do await clients dot send so clients dot all dot send async of receive messages so let we just build up a gateway between sending and receiving messages over here so the next part is uh, we have to keep add this guy right here in the startup. So what we are going to do is basically we are going to add the signal or service in the configure services. So resource dot add signal or method, and we have to add in the app configuration also. So app dot use signal r, and we have to set the route for it. So basically, the route would be the home page. So
route dot map hub of the chat hub which is the hub that we have created public hubs and over there let's declare the path of where this connection is going to be which is the route of home slash index basically so that's it that's fine so basically we are also going to get the current username so for that we have to contact the user manager so user manager and we have to use the app user as well as the uh, underscore user manager So let's just inherit the user manager, copy, put comma, and we'll take this thing right here, underscore user manager is equal to user manager. So we are going to get the current user is equal to underscore user manager dot get user asynchronously. So it's better that we have to use the asynchronous way of doing this thing. So task and the action result is going to be like this. So if so means we can also have to list async. So for that we have to put a wait over here. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. Get user async as well as, and uh, we have to add a wait over here too. And pass the current user, which is available in the user property. Mm, yeah, uh, we have to inherit the entity frame of code. So that's it, and we have to create. I'm going to create a, a wheel bag just to uh, get use of this current username. Current username is equal to mm, well, the current user dot. Mm, it's better to take the email ID rather than so current user dot user name right there. So, so that you, you, you can also create, uh, if you just created a first name or last name in the app user, you can also make use of that stuff in this way. That's why I do this kind of shit. Or you can just make use of that user.identity.name itself. But when it comes to that thing, you cannot access other than that username. So that's it. Nothing brief. Uh, okay, fine. Well, let's, let's just create uh, another thing, which is public async task i action result as well as create so message and we have to pass the message as well as the message object just to the messages should be stored in the database so if the model state is valid so if all the constraints that we have put and configured in a model is up to mark then it will send inside of this block and then we have to create a message dot username is equal to um, so basically, it's going to be the user dot identity dot name, right? Okay, fine. So then, where sender is equal to await user manager dot get user async um, just user in message dot user ID is equal to sender dot id so basically we are going to set the actual id of the user that is, who is uh, sending this message so that we can uh, store the message uh, uh, if you see inside of the messages you have a column called user id so we can store that value over here which will be very helpful to retrieve the data so the next thing is await uh, so the next thing is await underscore context dot add dot messages dot add over here. So it's 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 better to add, add a sync. Okay. Oh, let's pass the message over here. That's fine. So then we also need to save changes underscore context dot save changes sync. Okay, that's fine. Finally, we have to return. Okay. Okay, and we also need to return error if it is not okay. That's fine. Um, that's it, I think so. We just uh, created, we can create the message and we can also uh, uh, fetch all the messages from the database. So the next thing is I'm going to copy this signal R 
uh, copy the SignalR and paste it over here. And you can download the SignalR using the Lipson by just by right clicking, uh, just by right clicking over here and add uh, use client library to install the SignalR. And then what I'm going to do is to add and then I'm also going to add a, a jQuery.unobstructive Ajax file. Uh, if, if you want that these files, you can uh, click the link below in the description where I posted all of these files in my blog, so you can download it from there. So I'm just going to paste that. So here I just pasted the HTML which is required for this public talk. And uh, basically what I did is uh, I just uh, created a jumbotron and just uh, pasted the. And one thing I just forget. So basically what I did is I just created uh, a for loop where inside the for loop we are going to iterate the messages with the username, text as well as the date time and as well as we have the uh, text field uh, where it will post uh, send the data uh, via Ajax to the database as well as uh, using this ID kind of things we are going to uh, make use of the signal art. So the first thing we have to complete the signal art handler request so for that, uh, what I'm going to do is to create a connection. So if you watched the previous video uh, of the signal R, you can able to understand what I'm doing right now because I just explained all of these things over there. Hub connection to the dot with URL and the path is going to be the home slash index right dot build okay that's fine and then using the connection dot on we have to receive the message and the receive message comma add message to chat Then we have to make sure to connection dot start dot catch if you have some error and open up the curly brace console dot error in a sense we can see the error message just to check whether uh, it's working or not if it is not working then we can check the error message just to see what kind of message is that and then we have to create a function for send message to hub where I can pass the data connection dot invoke and here send message comma message okay so let's see over here so we just invoked the signal R and then um, we can go to the chat.js file and here is the and here I'm going to paste some code and I'll explain this stuff okay uh, I just created a class called message and uh, having the constructor by passing these fields and then uh, we are having the username and setting the username uh, which is this guy right here, uh, which is the uh, this guy right here, uh, we back that current username, and then text input document get element by ID from this uh, ID, and then we are also getting the chat ID uh, just over. Here. So you're having the chat ID over here just to uh, iterate append some data inside of that particular ID, and we just created a message queue as an array, and inside of the submit after submitting, uh, I'm just uh, invoking the add. Uh, so I'm just uh, so here I'm just uh, configuring the date uh, the sending date and then this fee this is for clearing all the fields inside of the text box and um, right here we have the send message so here is what this two things which is signal or request handler and chat.js comes into play so I'm just uh, creating uh, trimming all the data and uh, letting the data to work so we are just passing the username and text over here and basically we are uh, at the time of calling the send message to hub, we are just passing the object called message with these two datas, right? 
So that's how the Signaler is connected to work between these uh, um, UI elements and the Signaler client, right? So, and then we are having add message to chat. So here we just called, uh, we just passed the add message to chat, just like the delegate. But here you're just declaring and defining the actual thing, okay? So inside of that, you're, I'm just declared two things. One is, is it the current user message or it's not? So this is basically used for the designing purpose, whether it is a currently used uh, user or a logged in user or some other user. If, if it so means we can just alter the designs based on that. And we are just also having the container, uh, like container Docker, uh, as well as the normal container, because if we having the container Docker means, then it will be the UI for the current user who sent the message. If it is not the current user, means it will be the normal. Yeah, this is basically the UI thing, right? Okay. So let's send her the document of create element so after that we are just appending all of this data right uh, let's sender dot document uh, we are just creating a p tag as well as we are setting the sender as a class name and we are just uh, passing the inner html over there and also we are creating a p tag for the text that we just created and as well as we are just uh, appending the date time so finally we are appending all the things like container appending sender text when as well as the container so which will be reflected over here so if you see we are having the classes called container class time position text align cont color and offset so basically what i'm trying to say is if the container class is darker if the username is equal to message dot username in a sense but when it comes to here we are basically uh, getting the uh, data from the signal message dot username message dot text those kind of things and one final thing that i have to do is that i am basically going to add the css over here so i'm just copied my css and i'm going to replace that and after I replaced, everything's done. And uh, let's just build this guy, just to check whether any errors are not. So here, uh, inside of the layout, I just made some changes just by adding font of a minute, and then uh, just changing the publico kind of things. And uh, now let's just run and see the output. Up, oh, uh, as expected, we are having some problem, and I can easily figure out the problem is coming from the startup page where we didn't uh, basically the thing is we just changed the app user over here right so if you come inside of the models we just uh, changed that app user we are inherited the identity user to the app user so once we have done that thing we have to use the app user in our entire project we should not use the identity user that makes the conflict between the classes so for that we have to change all the identity user to app user so here you can see that identity user as app user just inherit and as well as you can also see that stuff in the um, login partial just over here and at uh, using um, I think it's publico dot models dot yeah I think that's it so here uh, just change both of the things app user right so now let's just rebuild this thing so again let's check that out so here you can see that viewback.current username user.name it, it's saying some null object reference error so basically which means we didn't add any user over here so we can have some constraint on that okay just like that if user dot identity is authenticated only if he is authenticated then we can assign that thing if not we should not assign anything so as well as we have to reflect this thing in the view also in the script to run only if the user is authenticated which means basically signed in is authenticated we can post the script over here right uh, basically this is not a good practice but it's it's quite good to get things done okay here we are having things right uh, okay fine uh, before that I can do one thing before doing this kind of bullshit things I can make this class as authorize so that if I reload this guy right here it will automatically redirect me to the uh, login page okay uh, this is the styles which I have had it and you can get those files in the description uh, whereas in the CSS you have that uh, style kind of things over here and uh, 
and this is the font which I'm using from the Google. If you don't like this change, I think it's it's good for me. Uh, so let's just create a user. So basically, raja at gmail.com in raja raman at one to three, raja raman at one to three. Yes, it's done. Uh, let's check whether the signal R is connected in our machine. No. Uh, what it's saying is add message to chat is not defined, right? Uh, let's check that out. And let's come to see. Ah, uh, whoops. Uh, we have to put chat.js uh, before. So let's reload this guy. And the WebSocket is connected. So now everything will look fine. So as a Raja Raman, uh, I'm going to create a hello message over here and send it over here. You're getting the actual thing. Okay. So let's go and check this stuff in the database. So go to the messages and whether it is stored or not. Right. So refresh it. Yes, we are having the user ID and the date time. Oops, we are not uh, defining the date time right here. So we have to do that. Go to the models message and uh, basically we have to initialize the date time. So when is equal to date time dot now, right? Okay, fine. That's it. Um, so I'm just going to delete this from the database. Because, uh, let's start this stuff from from scratch. So that's it. Uh, let's rebuild this guy right here again. So finally I'm going to create an incognito tab. So here I'm going to do a real-time chat. Uh, accept this or register a new user where as dna.net training uh, dna at gmail.com Whereas test at one two three is going to be the password test at one two three. So here it is. Let's begin the chat. Hello, Raja. So here it is. Concurrent chat. So let's take the database also. Here it is with the date time. Hello, Raja. Text, email ID, user ID. Everything is perfect over here. And not only that, we can uh, also message from both the ends. So hi, DNA. Just like that. It's fantastic, right? Uh, it's basically a cool kind of application. Um, and oops, it's not uh, fetching from the database. So there's some problem in fetching from database. So let's check that out, right? Um, let's for that, let's go to the home controller. Mm, let's get into here and message. Oh, shit, we haven't passed the messages. Oh, that's fine. Uh, just rebuild all of the shits once again. So come over here and reload both the guys. Here it is, all the messages. You can also continue the further cons, cons how are you like that? The chat will continue. So basically, uh, we just created a signal or chat applications. Uh, I hope everyone understand. Uh, so that's it for this video, guys. I uh, hope you understand. Um, um, So that's it for this video guys, hope you guys understand and just love what I did and if you like this video please like, share to your friends uh, and uh, if you want uh, more bits and tiny pieces in SignalR like detailing of how, what is Hub and what are all, all these tiny things if you wanted to know about that, I want 400 likes for this video and I'll make a complete tutorial on uh, SignalR uh, like um, and just like the web sockets and what is web sockets and long porting, how to do and uh, and next video most probably is going to be if I get this constraint. Next video is going to be the long polling where we can. I'm going to create a stock market like uh, signal R based, um, signal R based Bitcoin fetching data, Bitcoin currency range. So that's it. Thanks for this video. Please, if you have any queries or feedback, comment below.